Good evening, everyone. We continue our study in the book of Jeremiah. We are now in chapter 41, and the narrative continues from where we left off yesterday. Now, yesterday, Yohanan was telling um, Gedaliah uh, that there is this person by the name of Ishmael who wants to kill him, and Gedaliah says that that's not the case, and he refused to support that kind of uh, message. And we discuss a little bit about the idea of support, which is to trust or to place confidence in that messaging that came from Yohanan. We begin now in chapter 41 as we pick off from there. This would be, and then. It says, it came to pass in the seventh month that after a period of time came by, and obviously, um, Gedalia would think that, well, things would be peaceful. Remember, Gedalia was appointed by the king of Babylon to be the governor of Judea, of whatever is left in Judah. But now we have this particular individual by name of Yishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishama, of the royal family and of the officers of the king. This would be uh, what we call the king's captain. Officers would be the captains. And so he is part of the royal family. Now, the idea of a royal family is that there is such a thing called of royalty. Now, one of the things that people talk about in this case is that we see Yishmael being from the royal family of, of royalty, perhaps he thinks that it should be him who should rule over Judah and not Gedaliah. And since Gedaliah was appointed by the king of Babylon, that's the enemy. So why should somebody who is subservient to the enemy be the governor of Judah? And so perhaps Ishmael thinks that it should be him, himself, because he comes really of royal pedigree. So he came with ten men to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, at Mitzpah, where Gedaliah was. And there, the, the word and should be read as and then. After they came over, they ate bread together in Mitzpah. Now understand this aspect of eat bread. Eat bread is a form of fellowship and an idea of, of accepting Ishmael into the fold. In Hebrew terms, eat bread is a form of using grain like wheat, uh, making it into flour, and baking it into bread. And that's their primary source of food. In Asian countries, perhaps, this would be referred to as ate rice together. So it is a concept of really eating together because in an Eastern Oriental culture, when you invite someone to eat with you, you are extending uh, a hand of friendship. We see now in verse 2, the word then should be read as and then. After they ate, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and the ten men who were with him, then we see this. They were together with him. 
They rose up. Now, this word arose means stood up. Obviously, they would be sitting down when they are eating bread, right? After they ate, they stood up and they struck Gedalia. The word strike is a word to, with the intention to, I guess, cause to smite, right? Cause to strike. And this idea of cause to strike is with the intention to kill. And I just want to point out to all of us that this is a premeditated killing. Murder, if you want to use our modern term. They came there with the intent to kill Gedalia, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shafan, and they used the sword and killed him. And by killed him, literally means to cause to die, right? Caused him to die. Basically, ending his life. So this is murder. And him would be Gadalja, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Yishmael also struck down. Now this idea of struck down uh, comes from the same word strike to kill, right? Strike to kill. Same idea, struck down, it would be the same word. Strike down all the Jews who were with him. Remember the Jews are all of them from the southern kingdom. That is with Gedalia at Mitzpah and the Chaldeans who were found there, the men of war. So they also died. Ishmael had attempted an insurrection her, and attempted to overthrow the authority of the day. And the authority of the day had the endorsement of the king Nebuchadnezzar. And by this, it could be said that this is treason in the eyes of the king of Babylon uh, because Gedalia was an appointed uh, governor by him. But in the eyes of Yishmael, he felt that he had the right to remove unwanted authority by the king of Babylon because Judah does not belong to king of Babylon. Uh, Yishmael is from the royal family. And so rightfully, Yishmael should be the one who is sitting there instead of Gedalia. Verse 4. And then it happened on the second day after he had killed Gedalia. Remember the word kill here is cause to die. Cause to die. The idea of dying is ending life. Right? Ending life. When as yet no one knew it, that certain men came from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria. So nobody knew that Gedalia had died. And so there were visitors coming from Shechem, from Shiloh, from Samaria. That would be in the northern part of Mitzpah. 80 of them with their beards shaved and their clothes torn, having cut themselves. Now this idea of having cut themselves is laceration, right? Laceration. 
having beaten themselves with offerings and incense in their hand, and they wanted to bring it to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Now, Ishmael, the son of Netanyahu, went out from Mitzpah to meet them, weeping as he went along. And this idea of weeping is a pretend that he was very sad. And it happened as he met them, he said, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Achikam. So it was when they came into the middle of the city that Ishmael, the son of Netanyah, killed them and threw them into a pit. This would be similar to the pit that the, uh, the, the people wanted to throw Jeremiah into. And this idea of a pit is a hole in the ground. He and the men who were with him. But ten men were found among them who said to Ishmael, Do not kill us for we have treasures of wheat, barley and oil and honey in the field. Now these were the ones who had actually kept all these in time for winter. And so they offered it to Ishmael. Guess what? If you don't kill us, we can give you all these booties. So he desisted. Now the idea of desisted means that he stopped and did not kill them. So did not kill them and stop is the same thing. Among their brethren. Now the pit into which Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had slain because of Gedaliah was the same one Asa the king had made for fear of Baasha, the king of Israel. Now, this is a peculiar hole. We need to remember that this hole in verse 9 uh, is the hole that King Asa had made. And so Yishmael, the son of Netanya, filled it with those whom he had killed. Now, so far, he has been quite violent and he has tried to kill everyone except 10 men because there was something useful in return. Verse 10, and then, this would be, and then after he buried all those whom he had killed, Ishmael carried away captive all the rest of the people who were in Mitzpah, the king's daughters, and all the people who remained in Mitzpah, whom Nebel Zaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gadaliah, the son of Achikam, and Ishmael, the son of Netanyah, carried them away captive and departed to go over to the Ammonites. Now, I need to explain this. This is to take hostages. To take captives. He didn't come to take the land, but he slaughtered everyone, including Gadalia, and took away the royalty and all those who were in Mitzpah. These are people who are innocent. And this gives us a picture that the people of Judah oftentimes are faced with such threats. And this particular time, Ishmael is not an Ammonite. Ishmael is from the royalty of the king of Judah. And by that, Gedaliah is also the governor in Judah. They are all Jews. So the, these are the case of Jews fighting Jews. In verse 11, it says, but. Now the word but is and then. And then, when Yohanan, the son of Kariak, and all the captains of the forces that were with him heard of all the evil. Remember, evil 
is in the eyes of the beholder. And what Ishmael, the son of Netanyah, had done was he had killed the innocent people whom had befriended him. And when Ishmael killed them, it is seen from the eyes of Yohanan as evil. Then they took all the men and went to fight Ishmael, the son of Netanyah, and they found him by the great pool of Gibeon. And so then we need to now take a look at this. Here it says, And Ishmael took them away captive and went over to the Ammonites and they were on the way. As they were on the way, they happened to be at Gibeon. That is how it should be read. In verse 13, And then, so it was when all the people who were with Ishmael saw Yohanan, the son of Kariak, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, that they were glad. All the people here would be all the captives. Right? These were the captives. And they saw that Yohanan is coming and Yohanan would be seen as the savior. These were the people who were left there in peace by Nebuzaradan. But Ishmael could not have it. So these people were glad. Verse 14, And then all the people whom Ishmael had carried away captive from Mitzpah turned around and came back. Came back to Judah. And he went to Yohanan, the son of Kariak. So the picture that you find is that we have Yishmael in front. And then we have Yohanan coming after him. And then we have all these others who were captives. So the captives themselves decided that all of them went back to Yohanan. Why? Because there is deliverance. And Ishmael would not be able to stand before Yohanan because he had a lot of people with him. And so we now read verse 15. And Ishmael, the son of Netanya, escaped ran away. Now this idea of escape uh, means to slip away, I think would be a good word. Gave them the slip. While Yohanan was chasing them, somehow Ishmael managed to slip away from Yohanan with eight men and went to the Ammonites. So you notice the going over to the Ammonites is on the way in Gibeon, he was accosted. Now he really have to run fast to the Ammonites. Verse 16. Then. That would be and then. Notice the way that Yohanan went to get back the captives was by full force. Ishmael only came with a small number of people. And obviously many people would say that that is a, an unbalanced response. But when innocent lives are taken captive or taken hostages, then the way to move forward in this chapter was that Yohanan, the son of Kariach and all the captains of the forces of the army that were with him took from Mitzpah all the rest of the people whom he had recovered from Yishmael, the son of Natanya, after he had murdered Gedaliah, the son of Achikam. These were the mighty men of war, the women, the children, and the eunuchs, the captains, whom he brought back from Gibeon. This is the rescue. There is no way that Yohanan is going to meet up with Ishmael with just a few handful of people. In order to 
teach Ishmael a lesson and never to come back, Yohanan went with full force to recover all the hostages and all the captives. Verse 17. In verse 17, it says, And then they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Kimham. Kimham, which is near Bethlehem. And so they went from Mitzpah up north, past Jerusalem, into the land of Judah to the area of Kim Kim Ham, right? Kim Ham, and that would be near Bethlehem or Beit Lehem. There are two Bethlehems in the Bible: one up north and one down south. So we are talking about the one down south as they went on their way to Egypt. Because when they go further down, then that would be Egypt. So we know that this Kim Ham was in Bethlehem of Judah because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them because Ishmael, the son of Netanya, had murdered Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had made governor in the land. Why were they afraid? Because there was an authority that was placed there by the king of Babylon, and that authority was killed by Ishmael. And the Chaldeans will be very upset that somebody had come in to show treason and wanted to take over the place by killing Gedaliah. And that is in the mind of Yohanan. And so he had decided after the rescue that he would run to Egypt just in case the Chaldeans get angry after they learn about the death of Gedaliah. This is the idea that people have that when there is a superpower in the land and the superpower had delegated the authority and, and that authority dies because of some other people like Ishmael, then Yohanan would feel that there is no one to protect them anymore. And so they wanted to run to Egypt for refuge. Now, before we end, you, we need to realize that oftentimes the people of Judah, the kings especially, whenever they wanted help to withstand the enemies, they tend to look at Egypt more than a few times. They felt that the Egyptians would be able to protect them, which, in fact, they were not able to. That was the natural leaning towards a party that would protect them. They would not lean to Babylon, although the prophecies were told to them that they are to surrender to the king of Babylon so that they will live. But they see Babylon as the enemy. And so Yohanan had decided to run to Egypt. And with this, we come to the end of our session today.